In this video, we're going to learn how to create this amazing visual step by step. No skips and every detail will be explained. So without any further ado, let's dig into business. All right, guys, I'm very excited to start with this tutorial, but let me first thank you so much for your support for my channel. We have reached 30,000 subscribers in no time. Believe me, guys, that was insane. So thank you so much. And for this, I have two gifts for you. One of them is this full length tutorial. Everything will be explained in this tutorial. And the second thing will be 50% discount for all of my premium tutorials you will find the coupon code in the description and you will find the courses links in the description and now let's go to Photoshop and start having fun so as usual before we start I like to share with you the brief behind creating this visual the idea itself so what was in my mind is that I want to create a visual that represents the peaceful vibes of the dawn timing and simple scene. It, it doesn't have a lot of elements because I don't want to make it like a complex tutorial. I want just simple elements to be blended together to create a good looking visual. And at the same time, it's telling a story and it's evoking some emotions so here i wanted to create like peaceful relaxing emotion uh, in the soothing air you know this time and that's it that was the main idea so let's get to photoshop and let's start so i will start with creating a new canvas 1920 by 1080 p and then press create then i will just press ctrl alt i to expand this canvas to 4k this will give me more flexibility in zooming in, zooming out. So you will find all the images that I am using now in the description so that you can follow along with me. I like to start with the sky. So let's get this sky. And here I want to share some things about choosing the right images. Because uh, if you have an idea of a night scene, you need to find similar images uh, to the idea that is in your mind so that you don't put a lot of effort in blending images together. So for example, I could have get sunny day sky here and then turn it into night, but this will take time and it will not give me realistic results. So if I have the choice, I will just search for a sky that has already the style that I am looking for. That's why I chose this night sky. And another reason I like this image is this uh, horizon lights, which will serve our visual. This is the first image. Next, we will get this mountains image. Let's drag it and put it right here. Very cool. Let's, let's make it bigger. And of course, obviously, the first thing we are going to do with this image is to select its sky. So let me just hide this image and then from uh, select, I will press sky. This option, select the sky in a very good way as you can see right now. And then I will press into the mask. This will select the sky itself. And then I will press control I to invert the mask. The way I will put these mountains in a um, specific place is that I want the horizon line of this image, which is this line, I want it to be at the same level of the horizon line of the background image, which is this line here. Okay, so let's try to match the two horizon lines. I want these lights to be visible. Okay, so let's make this bigger like this. And let's put it right here. Let's go to the next element, which will be the middle ground parts, okay? For this, I have chosen this image of a city, this one. So for that, I will just try to match the same level of horizon line here and put it right here. And then I will mask it later, okay? So I'm now trying to match the horizon line then press OK. 
you can see the horizon line here is matching with this line maybe it needs to be a little bit to the bottom yeah very cool now we need to mask this part of course so we will create a mask and using the gradient tool i will press g and just will create a mask and this update this lifetime gradient you, you will find it only in the uh, updated version of photoshop okay maybe this area needs to be masked in a better way so let's bring our soft rendered brush and with a low flow we can mask this out okay this is the middle ground so as i am always saying if you want to create depth into your visuals you need to have several levels of depth so the first thing is the background which is the sky and the mountains the second thing is the mid ground which is closer to the camera that is shooting this scene and th the last thing will be the foreground which will make right away for the foreground we will get this image of the car and i prefer to open it into a new project to create all the adjustments that we want and then uh, put it into the project okay firstly i will cut this car from the background and i'll do this by simply going to the select subject tool and then select the car let's see if it's making good results i will create a mask yeah it's not bad especially because we will keep these shadows and we will not delete them uh, if co of course if we need to separate the car perfectly we need to use the pen tool but this for me that's not bad you know why because the car now is separated and that's what we only want okay so let's get these two layers into our main project and let's put it right here and press okay so what i created basically is two versions of the car image the first one i masked the car like so but the information is still in the mask so i can reveal some informations back if i want and the other one i will delete the mask from it okay and let's try to be organized here i will choose these two layers and put them into a group now let's care about the car image at first we need to get rid of this area the sky of the car so let's create a mask and then let's select this area i will do this by the polygonal lasso tool so i will just create a selection like this and i will mask it press alt backspace to fill the mask with black very nice and let's move the car a little bit to the left very nice i can see now that the horizon line is not horizontal okay so let's create a horizontal line and see yeah it's not horizontal so let's just rotate the whole group like this to make it completely horizontal that's very nice press enter and we can then make it uh, put it now we need to care about extending this part of the image so i will do this by simply selecting this part of the image and cutting it from here so let's just select it press ctrl c ctrl shift v to paste it in the same position and then press ctrl t again and start to distort it so i will press ctrl and start to distort it like this not i don't i don't want so much distortion so i will keep it as it is right now then press enter and i can simply duplicate it uh, but firstly let's smooth in these edges i will simply do this by creating a mask and with the soft rounded brush with a black color increase the flow i can soften this edge and then we can take a copy from this i press alt and drag this layer and take it take a copy 
of it and put it right here. Of course, the perspective of these lines is not matched. So I will do the same thing we did before. I will simply try to distort it like this. Okay, try to change the orientation of the lines. Very nice, not bad, especially because this area will be dark and the details will not be visible. So for me, it's okay. The next thing, we are going to bring the fence in this area. And as you know, I like to put all the images together at first. That's what I like. And then uh, I blend uh, the images again. So for this, I will select the white background simply using select and color range and will decrease the fuzziness and I will simply press into the white color and press OK and we'll create a mask. Simple as that. Then I press Ctrl I to invert the mask. Very nice. Let's get this to the, our main project. Let's drag it and put it here. Press yes and let's make it smaller. I need the size of the fence to look like um, it's not big so that's why I'm making it smaller let's duplicate it by pressing alt and shift to drag it at the same level very nice let's put it here and let's duplicate it one more time pressing alt and shift to drag it and put it here and the last part will be the light bulb the street uh, light bulb which is this one so for this I will simply do the same thing I will select it using uh, color range using color range maybe I will increase the fuzziness to maybe 7 and then press ok select it press ctrl I to invert the mask and let's bring it into our main composite press yes for this we don't want to reveal all the size of this bulb because it will not be visible in the real life so uh, I will just put it like this simple as that okay now we have all the elements in possession so we need to care now about blending all this together so let's start by the sky that's what i like to start with for the sky i want to create like dawn effect in which you have a very subtle orange light in the horizon and the sky is still dark so let's start by trying to give the sky a little bit of cyanish greenish color that's what i found that it will look complementary with these orange subtle colors okay so let's start by creating a color balance layer and create a clipping mask and let's give in the mid tones some cyanish tone and some maybe greenish tone and some yellow very nice let's go to the shadows for the shadows I will just give it some push in the blues and maybe tiny push in the greens and some cyanish push and so for the highlights I will give it reddish color can you see the horizon now when I'm increasing the red it is uh, increasing the reds in the highlights which is this tiny area okay so I will just give it a little bit of orange color and maybe some little touch of magenta and some little touch of yellow very nice very nice subtle effect but it's what i want so here is before and here is after the luminosity of the sky is good so i will not darken it or something but i will go straight to this horizon line part for this let's try to make uh, the the reddish orangey light i will do this by firstly duplicating this sky layer and then change its blending mode to screen so i am now creating like a brighter 
version of the sky image okay and i will then press ctrl u to bring the hue saturation adjustment and then let's try to shift its colors toward the orange okay maybe we can create a colorize effect and yeah that's much uh, better colorize effect and then increase the saturation maybe like this press ok and then I will create a mask press ctrl I to invert the mask and then I will paint here over this area with a very subtle flow effect so let's make the flow like 8% and let's draw this effect. can you see it right now this that is what was in my mind we can put some clouds brushes here so I will just duplicate this layer press ctrl J and press into the mask and then press alt backspace then ctrl I to invert the mask let's get another cloud brush ah this one looks cool so let's make it bigger and let's put some tiny touches of clouds very subtle effect and it looks very nice maybe we can decrease this, the opacity very cool I think we need to increase the green uh, color or the cyan color in the midtones here maybe these parts of the sky are very dark so we need now to open it a little bit using curves so let's open the shadows a little bit like this and then darken the highlights and let's zoom out to see that's nice that's really nice before after or after that's very nice okay so now let's care about the mountains the first thing that came into my mind for the mountains is that it is very dark in the edges specifically so let's start by correcting the lightness values that's the first thing I start with so I create curves adjustment layer and create clipping mask and now let's open up the shadows and let's darken it like this very nice very nice now let's care about the colors and maybe the saturation so let's start with the saturation because the colors are really blue colors so let's start by creating a hue saturation adjustment layer create a clipping mask and then let's shift the colors a little bit to the greens like so and desaturate it a little bit very nice very nice maybe we need to uh, make this a little bit contrasty now let's give it some color and I will do this by the same thing with color balance you can use the selective color if you like it's okay both are great tools so here I'm going to give it some cyanish touch and you can notice me now um, trying to zoom in zoom out this this is uh, a habit that I developed because I want to see always see the big picture I don't want to be lost in the details and then I don't care about the full picture okay so let's add some cyans in the shadows maybe maybe let's add some blues and then the final thing is the highlights let's see what if we increased the reds yeah that's very nice let's see before after subtle effect but it is what we needed the next element will be these city lights so let's start by uh, this time we will correct the colors using selective color because we basically just need to shift these blue colors toward cyanish ones that's it so I will create 
a selective color adjustment layer and create a clipping mask and choose the blues and let's see what if we increased the cyans let's zoom in and let's try to match this to this so i will simply increase the greens yeah that looks nice maybe add some yellows very cool and maybe make it a little bit darker now i think let's go to the cyans and see yeah where the cyans needs to be a little bit darker and shift it to the greens yeah that's very nice let's zoom out and see that's very nice here is before and here is after maybe it needs to be a little bit darker so we will do this by creating a curves adjustment layer new layout from the photoshop updates <laughs> is just bothering me okay anyway so let's create a clipping mask and let's make it darker like this subtle effect very nice let's see okay not bad not bad at all uh, the next thing we're going to bring the soft rounded brush and smoothen the edges of this city lights image so i will just decrease the flow and let's smooth these parts to blend them in a good way now let's care about this area so i will start by changing the colors of the ground that's why i put it into a separate layer okay so we can merge all this into a smart object all the ground layers into a smart object by pressing right click and convert to smart object and then we can apply all the adjustments on it so i will start with creating curves adjustment layer to care about the luminosity or the lightness value so i will make it dark like this because the closer you go in distance the darker and the more contrasty that your image should so this foreground part should be dark darker and um, that's nice so let's create color balance layer to adjust the color i will just add a bunch of cyans and some greens some yellows oops never forget to create a clipping mask <laughs> and the next step let's go to the oops that's that's very high amount of yellow so let's restore it very nice very nice let's go to the highlights and let's add some cyans and some greens do the same thing with the shadows add some cyans and some maybe here i will add some blues see it's oversaturated i have oversaturated the effect so let's get back to the mid tones again and let's decrease all the cyan color and as i'm always saying this is not a one-way process this you know, ongoing process you will always get to your image and edit it again so it's okay to make mistakes and what is more important is to learn from these mistakes very nice now let's care about this fence and i will simply blend all these images into a new smart object or merge them into a smart object let's put it into a group and let's name it fence okay so let's create curves adjustment layer the same process again and again create a clipping mask and let's make it dark because it's a very close element like so maybe we need to put it a little bit to the bottom next we will correct its color by color balance adding some cyan and some blue create a clapping mask again I always forget this <laughs> okay for me that's that looks nice for now now let's care about this 
um, layer of the bulb so let's put it into another group and let's call it bulb want to be organized here because it's easy to get lost with layers believe me guys <laughs> so let's create a curve clipping mask and make it dark as hell <laughs> like so and next we will do the same thing color balance thing clipping mask add cyan color add some yellow maybe some green not so much let's go to the highlights do the same process again and you need to make your eye always working and it needs experience actually let's care about the final element which is the car for the car i will decrease the um, lightness values the same way and I will give it some color tint but I don't want this color uh, effect to be dominating the original color of the car which is actually neutral so it's okay to dominate it but I don't I, I want the car itself to have uh, its original color so do, try not to exaggerate in the coloring of the car okay so let's add some cyan a little bit touch maybe some blue yeah it's very nice let's see okay very very nice now everything is blended but i can see that we need something here to create a transition between this fence and this road so let's get this grass layer and let's put it right here oops the image size is very big so let's make it small like this and let's select it maybe we can select it using color range I don't know let's try it out so I will uh, press select color range and let's select this white color but here I will increase the fuzziness a little bit then press ok and let's see create a mask press ctrl i to invert the mask hmm the edges is terrible but if we want to get rid of these white fringes I can say we can create another copy of this and create a clipping mask and then shift it a little bit to the uh, to the top and maybe we can make it bigger so by doing this we are just putting some grass um, pixels into the white fringes like so and then press enter let's see doesn't look bad but we need to erase these edges so using the brush increase the flow I will erase these edges very nice very nice make it smaller and now we can blend it using the gradient tool and the mask so let's create a mask and create a gradient like this oops like this yeah very nice press enter and let's fix its colors and uh, saturation so i will create curves adjustment layer and make it dark create a clipping mask make it dark almost the same darkness as this fence and um, next we will reduce the saturation of this green color so or or we can shift the color toward more cyanish color okay so let's try it let's make a clipping mask and let's try to shift its colors yeah now this looks better but we need to decrease the saturation very very nice of course its placement is not the best here so what about putting it right here 
I think maybe we can make it bigger and then press enter and see yeah it's not bad okay so now let's duplicate it and the, the reason why I didn't duplicate it from the first time because I want to make the whole effects and then duplicate it only one time okay maybe we can make uh, the duplicate bigger because we need it to not look as it's identical okay so maybe this looks nice and we can create a duplicate and put it right here very very nice and I can see that the edges these soft edges that we made is are not the best so let's get some of these edges back okay that's not bad not bad at all now let's care about putting the lighting effects so let's start by creating the colors that is coming out of this bulb I will start by creating a solid color adjustment layer let's choose some orangey yellowish color like this and then press OK and then press Control I I will make the brush very big and then I will put some clicks and then let's make the brush smaller and put another touches and then make the brush smaller and that's how I create like a glow effect that is coming out of a center point okay and let's make it smaller that's very nice and now let's change the blending mode of the layer to screen and let's try to put it right here I, I did this because I want to have like a glow very subtle effect coming out of this street bulb okay very nice make it big very big and maybe we can put it right here very cool maybe the colors are not the best so let's shift this color toward less saturated color like this that's better then press ok very nice now let's draw or paint the lighting that's coming out of this bulb into each element in our composite and we will start with the light bulb itself so I will do this by simply create another solid color with the same color we did before some color in this area then press OK and then I will create a clipping mask to this layer and maybe we can put the uh, layer into let's make it linear dodge and let's decrease the fill a little bit because the reflected light should be lower than the source of light then press ctrl i to invert the mask and now let's care about painting the light and here i want to tell you something i want you to care about the placement of the lighting and the intensity of the lighting so here we need to put the light here but it should be very high at this area and it fades away to this area and at this edge it should be high and here it should be faded and then it should be faded to this part okay and if you want to know how to draw light and shadow precisely i have created a full video for this you will find uh, you will find it in the description okay so using the soft rounded brush because this bulb is rounded it's like a cylinder so we need to create like um, a very soft edges so i will simply increase the flow of the brush and then using the white brush I will just paint like this I'm pressing shift here to uh, make straight line okay let's erase some areas from here and let's paint it again very nice it's very nice let's see very good 
now in this area we need to select it maybe using quickly polygonal lasso tool and the reason why I'm selecting it because I don't want the lights to get into this area at the bottom okay so using the white uh, brush I will paint over here and then we'll, maybe we'll fade it out like this very nice let's see that's very good now let's do the same thing here so I will select this area and then all of this area and then I will paint with the same brush but this should be subtle okay simple as this that's very nice let's see let's see before and after what here is before and here is after very nice now let's care about uh, painting the light into this fence and we will do the same thing but firstly this can you see this edge needs to be lit also so what about letting it like this this tiny details uh, is what makes your visual interesting okay very nice now let's care about the fence coloring I will just duplicate this layer and put it uh, this solid colored layer and put it here and then I will remove everything from it by selecting the mask and then pressing alt backspace and now I can care about this fence uh, lighting so I will use the same brush to paint the lighting here so I will just uh, press in the shift key and try to paint over this area and then let's paint it like this okay let's fade the edges and let's do the same thing into this edge using yeah I'm pressing shift to create straight lines and then make the brush smaller and erase the edges let's do the same thing here and here you need to understand the shape over the form of any object that you are drawing light on that's what I have explained in the tutorial of painting light all right very nice very nice let's see before and after we will do the same thing here so looks very nice let's see before after before after very nice now let's care about the grass and the uh, ground so I will just duplicate the same layer and put it into the ground part and then we can paint some lights here Okay. and for this I will use the blend if trick uh, that's because I will uh, I want to remove these colors from the black areas in the ground so I will double click into the layer and using blend if sliders I will remove the color from the black parts like this very nice very nice and then press ok let's see here is before and here is after we can make the effect uh, bigger and then fade it away then fade the edges very nice now let's care about the lighting of the grass so for this let's go to the grass layer and let's duplicate the same coloring layer we're using always and let's create clipping mask 
press alt backspace to remove everything and then maybe we can press control backspace to fill it and then using blend if slider we can remove it from the black spots and that's it yeah we don't we don't need to paint on it i think yeah that's very good trick and we can press Control i to invert the mask and using the soft rounded brush we can paint the light back so we can paint it here with high intensity and then fade it away like so let's see it's not bad at all i don't like how it looks here so for this i will go to the mask and start to refine this using the black color so it should be defined and a little bit sharp not as it was very good maybe we can fade it a little bit not so much yeah that's cool that's better let's do the same thing here in this area so i will go to this what about duplicating it so let's just delete this one and delete the other one and just duplicate the one here so i will press alt and duplicate it and put it right here very nice of course the selection needs to be uh, edited the mask okay now let's care about lighting the car itself so for the car at first we need to get rid of this uh, darkening uh, that we have done with curves so let's go to the curves and let's get some lights back so i will just reveal the main lights of the car itself which is in this back torch or light and here we have some lights okay very nice maybe these lights also very nice now let's paint over the ceiling of the car with the same soft rounded brush i will just remove some darkening from the areas that we have done using curves so I'll just softly do this let's see looks nice let's see the effect that we did here is before and here is after we just revealed the the lightness of the car itself so let's start putting some colors into the car I will start by the same uh, layer here put it right here press um, alt and press between the two layers to create a clipping mask and let's remove everything from this layer by pressing alt backspace and then using the soft rounded brush i will create like soft light above the core because the car itself has very good light distribution so i don't want to um, break this or to ruin this so I will just create soft like light effects like this and of course it doesn't look uh, good but using the blend if magic we will remove the light from the black areas so I will just uh, split the cursor like this and remove the color from the complete black areas and that looks good for me maybe we can refine it more so let's try to refine this more i will paint over here maybe we can remove it from here and from here and from here let's decrease the flow of the brush because we don't want it to be like a contaminated uh, light we don't uh, we want it to look like natural so this is not bad let's see that's not bad next we should 
put another layer of this lights but at this time I will not use blend if because I will create somehow sharp lighting so let's change the blending with interlinear dodge and decrease the fill and then press control I to invert the mask and using any textured brush so for, for example I will use this texture brush and I will paint light here okay very nice maybe use another brush oil pastel yeah they, I like this brush yeah let's decrease the flow at first Okay, that is not bad. Uh, maybe we can decrease the fell again. And now that looks good. Uh, I think we need to create like a glow effect coming out of this bulb. So let's create a solid color with an orange color or red color. Press OK and let's make the blending mode screen. And then press Ctrl I to invert the mask and let's create a clipping mask and let's use the soft rounded brush the same brush we used before to create like a glow effect so using the white color i will paint over here to to create this glow effect and i think we need to uh, remove the clipping mask because we need the glow effect to be outer the size of the car very cool let's see we don't want to exaggerate so this is nice this is nice and now we can create some lighting effect from uh, the front lights of the car i will use overlays for this so I will use this light overlay for um, the front lights so I will put it right here right click flip horizontal to get this color and I will make it bigger of course all this will not be visible because I will put it behind the car itself and then I will change the blending mode into screen and next I will put it right here and remove this part using mask increase the flow using the mask very nice and I will change its color by hue saturation so let's pr press ctrl u press colorize and let's choose this orangey yellowish color maybe increase the saturation a little bit change the hue and then press ok and let's see it looks nice maybe we can make it bigger and then press ok looks nice and we can also put this uh, overlay it's, li it's like a lens flare overlay for the car lights yeah let's flip it horizontally and let's put it right here very nice change the blending mode into screen press ctrl u colorize and give it the same color increase the saturation maybe and then press ctrl l to remove these edges so i will just remove these edges like so and then using a mask I will remove these parts very nice very nice 
let's see here is before here is after of course we need some lights in the ground I will paint this using the same layer put it right here remove everything from the layer and using the polygonal lasso tool I will paint the direction of the light so it should be like this and then using the soft rounded brush I will paint some light effect like so and of course it, it will not be as sharp as this so I will try to fit it out using any kind of blur effect so maybe we can convert this into smart object and then using the field blur filter I will fade it so let's put a point right here and another point here in which the light should be sharp this will give us this effect of the light spreading out very nice I press ok and see lastly we can create some hazing or fog or dust effect right here using fog brush with the same color so I will get this fog brush and choosing the same color in a new layer I will just make some fog effect of course it should be the flow should be low and I will just create some hazing dust effect like this and oops it's very high let's create a mask and let's erase from it yeah that's not bad very cool very cool now it's time to create the water reflections effect for this I have like this bottle map uh, which I will use to create the water reflection effect and let me explain that to you I will just put this into the ground plane so let's make this together I will right click press distort and then press alt and shift at the same time to distort the map so I want to get this distance perspective and then I will make it like this maybe put it right here and we can um, make it bigger so right click scale and then make it bigger press alt and shift to make it bigger very nice now I want to select the white colors to put our reflection on it so I'll simply select it by only making this visible and then press ctrl A ctrl C so I have copied this and then let's get back everything and then I will create a mask press alt and press into the mask so that I get into the mask mode and then press ctrl shift V to paste it into the mask itself okay so when I get back to our main project I will see only these white spots okay the next thing I will just hide this for a moment and then create a new layer at the top of everything and press alt Control shift E this will create um, another layer from the visible uh, layers and then I will press Control T right click flip vertical into this layer and then I will just skew it like this because he the, that's where the reflections should be and at the same time we can distort it because water is simply the reflection of the objects that you have 
in the scene so if I make like a duplicate like this and put it into the um, uh, our map layer here we can create a clipping mask and just be visible here I hope you understand the point okay so I will simply drag this layer until I find a decent place and I can do this more than one time so for example here I can uh, only care about the core reflections here so I am showing this so for now I only care about the reflections of the car so let's try to get it right and you could have done this element by element so for example I could have uh, just copied the car element and reflected it and then copied the bulb and uh, make a clipping mask for each element by his own okay but for now I will just um, make it as a whole image using any kind of brush so I will only keep the reflections of the core very good now let's create another duplicate of the core reflection and I will simply create a clipping mask again and I will now I will care about this line here so let's put it like this I am caring about the grass part right now so let's make this bigger and let's care about this bulb reflection and the gap and the grass that's all what I'm caring about right now very good press enter and then let's remove any other reflections for now everything looks good now let's go to the final color grading so I will simply start by creating curves to create like a vignetting effect making it contrasty like this and then press ctrl I to invert the mask using soft rounded brush I will just make the edges a little bit dark because I want the focus to be in the core itself and the final thing is I'm going to create a new layer and press alt Control shift E to create another layer um, then right click convert to smart object and let's go to the final spices which is the camera row filter from this I go to filter and camera row filter and here the magic starts so here I think we need to add a little bit of contrast and maybe we can change the white balance a little bit to the yellow yeah I think let's go to exposure maybe we can make the image darker open up the shadows no a little bit the highlights are good but let's push push it and um, that's too much let's go to the texture add a little bit of texture not so much and let's increase the vibrance because I, I want it to be like a vivid color scene okay let's go to the calibration let's start to change the calibration of the orange colors I think this is better and let's see here okay the saturated one is better let's go to the orange no I don't like it so let's keep it as is very nice let's see before and after very subtle okay now let's go to details add some sharpening let's see add some sharpening and maybe we can go to the effects and add some grains let's see yeah the grains is giving it a very good touch 
All right, I, it bothers me how this yellow color pops. So let's go to the color mixer and let's shift these colors to more orangey one. Let's see. Hmm. And the sky colors needs to be shifted into more orange one. Yeah. That's nice. Let's go to luminosity decrease increase the luminosity of the uh, reds and what about the oranges maybe decrease them what about the yellows yeah, decrease them not that much let's go to the saturation increase the saturation of the yellows and let's see the cyans maybe increase the cyans blues mm. it's basically changing every slider you can until you get the best result that's what i'm doing right now so let's go to curves i like to add split toning effect so add some yellow in the highlights some blue in the oh this tiny blue touch is giving it a, a, a very good touch maybe we can increase the contrast like this Let's go to the reds. Let's see. Hmm. That's very nice. Maybe we can add a little touch of red in the shadows. Just a tiny touch. And let's see if we added cyan. Yeah. It always work. This split toning effect always work. Or uh, for me at least at least. Okay, maybe you can increase the contrast and there you go. Here is before, here is after. Press OK and see. Yeah, that's the final result. And here is before and here is after. All right, guys, that was very intense. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. So these kind of projects take some time, at least for me to record it. And you may find that I have made some mistakes so it's okay because I am trying to explain while I am doing the work itself. So it's okay to make some mistakes. Try it yourself. Try to make a better version uh, from this. And you will find the stock images in the description. And as mentioned before, we have 50% discount for all the premium courses. You will find the link and the coupon code in the description. And yeah, if you want another full tutorial like this, you will find it in this video. Peace.